Great. Our story today starts at the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, where for the first time at a global scale, we introduced the linear model of production and consumption. Take, make, dispose. Synthetic plastics blazed into existence, fueling historic economic growth. And then, about 20 years ago, the cracks started to appear in the system. By the early 2000s, we knew about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, and a new wave of environmentalism was starting to take root. Five years ago, we made some truly historic shifts towards a circular economy. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation, in a landmark move, set up the global commitment. And at the same time, at Repurpose, we were laying the foundations for our very first waste management projects at some of the world's most unprotected coastlines. The last five years have been remarkable. And that brings us to today. I am so honored to be able to share in this moment in time with all of you, standing at what might just be the most pivotal crossroads we might ever face. Because five years from now, we might all be working together, galvanized by a unified UN treaty, or our governments might still be fighting over the definitions of upstream and downstream. 20 years from now, we might be sitting here celebrating the fact that we have eliminated the amount of plastic that is leaking into nature. Or, if current trends continue, we might instead have ended up tripling it, tripling the amount of plastic leaking into oceans. Rarely in the course of human history has the impact on future generations been so dependent on the decision-making of a single decade. This is the defining decade, a window of opportunity, a sliver of time that will inevitably change the course of our planet's future and that of our species, and I do not exaggerate. We need to lead with urgency and pragmatism. But what does that actually call for? I don't have a single answer. We know there is no panacea. But I do have four requests. The first, in addition to long-term ambitious impact commitments and impact goals, we need private sector commitments for concrete financial investments. Because ultimately, an impact gap is nothing more than a financing gap. Whether we want to scale up pilot use cases of brilliant innovators, or we want to create internal supply chain changes, all action requires capital. And the UN Global Plastics Treaty can give us a North Star for us all to rally around, but what is it that will actually get us there? In our role as the conveners of the Innovation Alliance for the Global Plastics Treaty, Repurpose spent a lot of time last year with Earth Action and several other industry veterans trying to see if we could put a number to this goal, to a simple goal. And we found an answer. If we want to reduce the amount of mismanaged waste by 90% by 2040, we need to invest into our circular economy across the value chain $5.2 trillion. Annualized, that's about 0.2% of global GDP. It's a daunting number, but it's also in many ways an optimistic one because it is possible. For context, we call for 2.5% of global GDP to go towards climate action. And importantly, we need to be extremely deliberate in how we spend our time and our money 
in looking for the specific outcomes that come out of every dollar invested and every minute invested of this defining decade. Which leads me to my second point. Environmental impact is often an output. Designing for people, designing for communities is the input. In many ways, I look around this room and I see a lot of us as public servants. Because designing a circular system is not just about reducing waste, no. It's about giving people practical, affordable alternatives. It's about quite literally changing the way how all of us go about our day-to-day -day lives. Let me give you an example. The southern state of Kerala in India has a chronic plastic pollution problem. It is slightly larger than the state of Texas by population and sits on the border of the Indian Ocean. It has a plastic litter index that is three times the global average and a whopping 95% of plastic that is produced here was either burnt or dumped and found its way into the ocean. And for many years, many, many solutions were tried and they failed. Tens of millions of dollars were wasted. Why didn't those solutions work? Well, it turns out a lot of them were just starting by building waste management infrastructure, looking at the environmental outcome without taking into consideration the behavioral changes that were needed from the local communities to actually make the supply chain work. In 2020, Repurpose started Project Harakal in Kerala to tackle the same problem, but from a different angle. Instead of starting with buildings, we started with local governments, panchayats, self-help groups, local nonprofits. We spent many months getting buy-in from residents on why sorting, segregating, separating waste and waiting for curbside collection was not unhygienic why it was worth the effort compared to just dumping it out the window. And here's the good news, it worked. In the last three and a half years, Project Harakal has been able to bring dependable waste management as a sustained, dignified human right to over 600,000 people for the very first time. Thank you. And this important input metric, I'm proud to say, resulted in the doubling of the collection of low-value plastic across the entire state of Kerala. Environmental impact is an output, but are we designing for people? Are you designing for the communities that will be most impacted by your decision? Thinking global is thinking for the future. Our ocean currents, our leak packaging waste, they do not recognize international borders. The global south today, Asia, Africa, South America, represents 85% of the human population. So there is no way we can have a circular economy that only works over here. And I have a, a little story um, that I often think about around this point. When I was really young, I was growing up in southern India with my grandparents for a little while, and I had picture day at school, and my grandmother wanted me to look good for picture day. So she went to the store and she bought a single sachet of shampoo, a single one rupee sachet of shampoo that just had one use, one wash in it, because living on a retired public school teacher salary in rural India, she could not afford to buy the whole bottle, let alone anything more expensive, even if it was more economical on the long run. These are the realities that we must be designing for. The Reuse Outcomes Fund, launched by Repurpose Global earlier this year, looks to take on these topics of just and equitable transition, because the future is reuse, and reuse needs to be global. Which brings me to my final point, radical collaboration over competition. Because impact is not a zero-sum game. There is no single answer that will pull us out of this mess. No, we need to create the space for all solutions to coexist in the right balance. 
In the words of my wonderful friend, John Smeha, we cannot build for the lives of eight billion people on this planet and take sides against each other. How we show up with each other matters. How we show up for each other matters with exponential ramifications into the future. So how are you spending this defining decade together? Because the people in this room, all of you, hold the keys to the floodgates of change. And I wait alongside billions of people who, whose lives will be impacted by your decisions. We wait to rejoice in the waves of change that I hope you will create. Thank you.